Hello and welcome. So in this section, we're going to be talking about how to manage multiple environments using Customize. So here I have a sample use case for a day one microservice application. And this is typical of what you'll see for most customized workflows out there. You most likely just see a base with a list of YAML files. And these YAML files could be application with the associated services. And then you have overlays, which could be dev, stage, or prod overlays to just feed off that base and then add or append additional customizations or overlays on top of your base. So in this case, you have something like additional replicas, which is one of the things you'll see mostly where you want to have more replicas of your application run in a stage and production environment as opposed to the dev environment. In this diagram, you can think of the rectangles as directories. So you have a base directory, and then you have a dev stage and prod directory. And then you just run hydration on your customization file and then have an output YAML file. And then that output YAML file is now written or sent to your Kubernetes API. Okay, so that's very basic. Now let's take a look at what day two use case is. That's use case we saw in day one is useful and good. If you have a simple microservice application or monolith application where you only have two, three manifests of some sorts to manage. But then if you have a complex microservice application and the more you run your application, the more complex it gets, you begin to find out some issues with that workflow or that kind of setup in your customized workflow. And we'll take a look at an example as we go forward. But then something else you'll see is for much more medium size or large scale than the previous example microservice applications we've seen is you have directories for each microservice application, okay? Now remember in the first case we saw, we only had one base directory that had all our YAML files in there, okay? Now in this one, we have separate microservices directories that contain manifests that are specific to that microservice, okay? So here you can see we have a backend with a config map, secrets, and every other manifest files or YAML files that are a part of that service are going to be are going to be stored together with that service in the same directory same for the admin and the front end as well and then you have a base customization the yaml file so now you have two subdirectories so you have the base subdirectory which has a customization file in there and then inside of your base you have separate microservices directories this helps keep things much more organized and you can easily manipulate the configuration and add or remove services or configurations for services as much as you need without having to impact other parts of the application as well. Because each microservice application or each microservice directory has its own customization file in there. So that gives you that granular level of control on each service as well. And then you have your dev overlay, which feeds off of the base. Then you have a stage as well. Then you have a production as well, which is similar to what we had in the previous case. And then you can append other classes or other customizations on top of your base. Now, this is good as well if you don't have to do so much customizations in your overlays. So in your stage and prod environment or dev or as many other environments as you have that feed off of your base, if you don't need to do so much configurations outside of your base, then this works really good. Then you do run your customization file hydration and then get an output and that gets sent to your Kubernetes API. Now we have another workflow, which is the day three workflow. Now this is typical or usually very good for large microservices applications where you have a lot of app specific dependencies. And then besides that, you have these dependencies replicated across environments and they're different across environments. So take, for example, where you have an application that runs in your dev environment and that same application needs completely different configuration and resources in the stage environment and prod environment and other environments as well. So while the base application is complicated on its own, you still have several layers of complication that are separate or different by environment. So in this case, you have a workflow similar to this, where you have your backend in directories, just like we saw in the previous workflow, which is our day two. But now we also have subdirectories in our overlays. So like in this case, you see we have a backend, an admin, and a frontend directory as well in our dev overlay. Now what's interesting here, however, that's different from the previous day two workflow setup is here, your backend application is feeding off 
of the configuration in your base for the backend. So the backend in your dev overlay points directory or references the backend in your base, while the admin as well in your dev environment overlay references or fits of the admin directory in your base and likewise for the front end as well. So you have this final level of separation where each microservices in each environment feeds off the corresponding configuration in the base. So it gives you much more higher level of abstraction between different microservices and the configurations for different environments. And then you can use a customization file in any of these root directories to tie everything together. And then you run hydration on this as well and then deploy or push this over to your Kubernetes API. So most applications may not really get to this level of complexity, but we're going to see this complexity looks like and how easy it's going to be to manage things eventually in the long run. Now for the coding part of this demo, I have selected a microservice application that we're going to use. And that is the Google Cloud Sample Microservices application that's called Online Boutique. Now I've chosen this microservices application for our customization workflow demo because I think it has a sufficient level of complexity that we're going to need as we work with different customized workflows. So it's a microservices application that has about 11, I think about 11 to 12 microservices running. It also has a load generator that automatically generates load in the system. So it's kind of simulating a real life flow for running application, so which is good for what we're trying to do. So you don't have to worry so much about this directory. If you have the course repository cloned locally, then you already have what we need for this course. Now, if I go all the way back into my local directory here, you will see you have a multiple EMVs directory in there. And if you take a look at the base, you will see you have all the manifest files in there to deploy the online boutique application. Okay. So this is what we're going to be working with for our day one ops, day two ops, and probably day three as well in the next couple of videos. So here's an interesting challenge for you. You can go ahead and take a look at this manifest files and try to see if you can begin to identify some of the challenges or the issues that you may have if you run this on like a live environment. And as it gets complicated, some of the issues you eventually have for working with a directory that looks like this. Okay, one of the things you'll notice in the front end application manifest here is you have a growing number of environment variables. Okay, all hard coded in, in into the, this file. The, the file. Just see if you can identify some of the issues that we can alleviate. And we're going to build out our day one ops in our next video. So go ahead and give that a look. Then, next video, we're going to take a look at how we can begin to transform this raw manifest into a nice customization workflow. Okay, see you then. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss future contents like this. Thank you.